Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, so I'm uh, super happy today to have the opportunity to uh, discuss with Will from Brandwatch uh, about uh, the progress uh, the company has made over the past years. Uh, at Partech, you may know this, we invest in tech companies from seed to growth. Myself, I'm with the growth stage fund, and we invested in uh, Brandwatch two years ago. Uh, and since then, uh, quite a lot has happened. So first, maybe, uh, Will, can you uh, tell this uh, uh, audience uh, what Brandwatch does, where Brandwatch is, and yourself, uh, what you do and where you come from? Cool. Thank you. It's great to be here. So Brandwatch is the world's leader in social intelligence. We are used by uh, thousands of customers around the world to inform their marketing decisions and 30% uh, of the Fortune 500 are clients. We have a very, very strong enterprise client base. It's a global business, offices in Singapore, very, very strong presence in the, in the US, which we'll probably talk about, uh, as well as elsewhere around the world. Uh, my background, I'm the CMO. Uh, unfortunately, our CEO is ill today. I'm standing in with Omri. Um, what was your other question? A bit, bit more about the business. And maybe just... Even the product, you know, what, I'm a customer, what do I use Brainwatch for? Yeah, cool. So uh, you are a, a market researcher. You are working in a company like Unilever, where consumer insights are incredibly important and inform not only the marketing strategy, but the product development strategy. You need to keep the C-suite informed about how the brand is performing, whether there are reputational issues, security issues. And all of that can be done through Brandwatch Analytics. Our Vizio product visualizes beautifully the data that you need to see at the moment you need to see it. And it's used in command centers. It's used in corporate HQs. It's used at Super Bowls by big advertisers to make dynamic marketing decisions. So that's our primary customer. Another big customer group for us is the less data analytical marketer, the more everyday marketer. Agencies is a big part of our client base. So all of the world's holding group agencies are happy clients of Brandwatch, and we're extending those relationships cool. aggressively as we speak. So Brandwatch is a big SaaS business. Can you give us an order of magnitude of where you guys are today? Yeah, Brandwatch is a big SaaS success. We are profitable. We uh, are round number terms. Uh, Q3 was uh, just under 10 million pounds in, in revenue. Uh, we have fantastic investors in Partech, Highland, and Nauta. So we're feeling very well backed. We know what we're doing. Uh, and we're growing aggressively and ambitiously from a European HQ as well. And a substantial uh, part of our revenues come from the United States and elsewhere in the world. So we've, we've done that thing of taking the business globally. So let, let's talk about that. Uh, growing into the US is for all European software firms uh, a must, and succeed, success will be done if you succeed in the U.S. So, yourself, you, you actually were an exec in the U.S., uh, now you're back in the U.K., so you, you've seen this, so tell us about, you know, how did Brandwatch succeed in, in the U.S. and keep on uh, growing there? Yeah, I think it's a, a fantastic challenge and opportunity, and Brandwatch has successfully executed on that. Uh, we did a couple of things that I think you guys can replicate. Um, Firstly, we exported our talent. So one of the things that Brandwatch has always done is we've taken tried and tested members of the company, people we know are performers and their strong cultural fits that the CEO, Giles, felt he could trust. And we've exported them around the world. Our first employee in the United States was our most successful UK-based salesperson. So we took the engine, we took the crown jewels, and we said, no, we're going to roll the dice. We're going to put put this guy in this market, because if we believe anyone can do it, we believe he can do it. Um, Giles himself, the CEO and founder, then spent six months helping to kind of onboard that, helping to make that uh, successful. We were extremely lucky. Um, one of the biggest banks in the world, which is an American bank, uh, takes the view that they need to assess every vendor and they were impressed with the technology. They got on board. We then added one of the other big US banks. And from there, we had that foundation, that platform that we could start to extend. The credibility had been established. And we, we did everything you guys would do. We, we made those customers extremely successful. Can you give some names of customers? Uh, yes. Uh, so Unilever is a, is a brand watch client. US customers. 
Okay, um, in the US, who am I allowed to name? Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, let, let me come back to that. I will, okay. I will come back to that. Um, but, um, but lots and lots of... So, Brandwatch is mostly an uh, enterprise and agencies uh, business today, uh, but you recently closed an acquisition. Uh, maybe you, sh you could tell us about uh, what this acquisition is uh, and the rationale uh, behind this. Yeah, sure. So we recently announced uh, the acquisition of a very, very popular, successful, much-loved uh, marketing platform, marketing tool called Buzzsumo. It's loved because it's really quick and easy to use. It has a free trial. It's a freemium model. Uh, so hundreds of thousands, literally, of marketers around the world use Buzzsumo and love Buzzsumo. Um, we bought it for a couple of reasons. Uh, the business was intensely profitable. So for us, it was like, wow, this is a fantastic strategic fit in an intelligence portfolio for the marketer, but it's also throwing off uh, good amounts of, of cash, and that um, can only help. We were, as a business, already uh, on track to break even, but that's accelerated that journey. And also, we really like the, the talent and the DNA of the company. We think that these guys know exactly what they're doing. Um, They've had an incredibly successful four years, and we plan to run it at a hands-off without interfering too much, but providing the go-to-market muscle, the scaling from an infrastructure point of view, like whatever they need to call on from a bigger group, we've got it. And at the same time, we want to actually be inspired by their agility, their entrepreneurial uh, speed and, 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 and talent. Excellent. Um, so. Still talking about uh, scaling and uh, uh, what does it take to, to get businesses to that side. On the marketing function, that of course you know very well, um, what changed over the past uh, five years? What did you uh, do a certain way five years ago that has now totally changed? I That's, think this could be yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's a great, great question. You know, from my point of view, the number one thing I would say to the Noah crowd is that Giles, the CEO, backed marketing from day one, way before I joined the company, and he backed, in particular, inbound and content marketing. So by the time I joined the company four years ago, and I'm the longest serving exec after Giles, um, we had a strong inbound lead generation machine every day, demo requests coming in that our salespeople can convert. So to begin with, what we did was we scaled that up. I hired more and more people in different languages to build the same playbook effectively for, for France, for Spain, for Germany. Um, and that, that worked, but when it comes to selling to enterprise clients, which I know is another big topic for, for you guys, it, that's not enough. And so we pushed hard as well, particularly in the US, where I was based for two and a half years, on the Gartner, the Forrester relationships. We took the brand on the road. We wanted to make sure that every buyer had heard of Brandwatch because that would, uh, with the American buyers, you know, credibility and reassurance and risk aversion are, are bigger, than, bigger than that entrepreneurial national culture would admit. They, w they don't want to screw up. Um, so, so we supplemented the inbound marketing with, with uh, high-end analyst relations. Most recently, I think the interesting pivot we've made is to a much more of an outbound model. We marched upscale. We've got bigger and bigger and more and more global enterprise brands working with the Brandwatch products. And with those guys, there are smaller numbers of them. We don't need to wait for them to come and fill out a demo request. So now we have outbound calling, social selling. We know who we need to sell to. We know which verticals we're strong in. And um, I'm really enjoying, as a marketer, the directness of that because we're not waiting. We're going out and, and getting on with it. Great stuff. Um, so 2017 is almost uh, finished. If we look to, to the future, uh, what, what you think are going to be the, 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 big, the big thing happening in the next uh, couple of years for Brandwatch? For Brandwatch, uh, for us, as I said, like no bullshit, we're feeling really well backed, really well supported, and quite excited about what's ahead. For us, there are a number of uh, interesting potential choices strategically uh, we think there may be some consolidation in our market. We see an extremely interesting opportunity around the broader marketing workflow. We actually think that marketers need more and more data and more and more intelligence and insights. So 
our core DNA around intelligence for marketers is a really strong opportunity. That's from the kind of the product side. Business-wise, which is, which is the part I'm most involved in in the CMO, is global expansion. You know, I know you guys have um, partnerships and relationships in China, for example. That's one possibility. Uh, essentially, we want you guys to, and everyone you know, to have heard of Brandwatch and to know that Brandwatch is the company that provides marketers with the answers they need when they need them. So that's, that's the job. Cool. Our time is up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.